Hi, I'm Jessie. I am the founder and designer of Petite Culture, an up-and-coming petite fashion brand offering high-quality, stylish clothing tailored for petites, 5'3 and under. I love that, 5'3 and under. <laughs> it's much needed. Very yes, much needed. absolutely. <laughs> this is just a little bit of the deep dive the back into your... Was it so much your past? How recent were you working in the medical field? I would love to know. I'm very interested. Oh my gosh. I had just left the medical field last August. I was an ultrasound technologist for 12 years. It was my career. I loved it. I actually didn't leave intentionally. I had to leave. I have a son with special needs. So I got to the point where the schooling system just didn't have the resources to help accommodate him. So I am now homeschooling him and as far as fashion goes and how I got into starting a fashion brand is kind of crazy. So I have to backtrack back to when I graduated high school in 2005 and I applied to fashion school here locally in Orlando, Florida. And around that time, I also entered an essay contest to win some college money. And I won that contest. And in that essay, I had described how I wanted to become a fashion designer and create clothing for shorter women like myself and all the struggles I had, you know, gone through my whole life. I ended up not going to fashion school. I kind of got cold feet and I went a more stable route, which was the medical field. And again, I loved it. But, you know, fast forward to last year, I had to leave my career and I was home on YouTube watching, you know, styling videos and things like I do with my time. And this ad kept coming up and it said how to create a fashion brand without going to fashion school. And I was so intrigued because for years, my own husband was like, why don't you just go to school again and start your fashion brand or learn how to sew? Because he knows firsthand my struggle shopping. And I brought it up to him and he's like, you know, research it, make sure it's legit because so many people nowadays just sell a course. And she's fantastic. I took this course, I knew she was legit and everything I've learned up to this point has been because of that. So here I am 18 years later, finally fulfilling this dream of mine to start a petite fashion brand. So it's kind of like full circle. It's been surreal. I love that. I always think that, you know, you kind of always go back to those things that you once were interested in and you always exactly. have passion in. And so yeah. I think that's quite lovely. I just found something quite recently of my drawings from when I was, I think, seven. That I did like a whole fashion line. And it's crazy. Oh, I went to just business school starting off with. And then I kind of was like, I don't, this is not what I want to do. Obviously, I want to be in the fashion industry. Why don't I go to fashion school? But I did choose that route of more stable kind of future. I ended up going back to my roots. So I think that's quite lovely that you went back to where you, your heart was. Yes. With that. yes. <laughs> Thank you. And I don't think that you have to go to fashion school. And I think as my interviews have proven, I've had quite a few individuals who I think you know of as well, who created yes. the lines that didn't have a background you know in the fashion world and they just had a dream and drive and i think that's so amazing and inspiring for people who don't go to fashion school you know those dreams aren't just dreams you can actually do it if you put forward the effort so i think that's really inspiring for other individuals to hear as well yes i agree <laughs> did you have any fears or any doubts when you were making this transition i think there's always that fear of the unknown. Right. And when you start a business, you know, you're thinking if all the time and energy and effort and investment that you're putting into something is going to be worth it, if it's going to pay off in the end. So you kind of have that imposter syndrome going on and you think, you know, what if this doesn't work? And what if I fail? And I'm just a firm believer that whatever scares you, do it anyway, right. you know, do it scared, do it ugly, but you owe it to yourself to try and just go for it. <laughs> so I would rather, you know, take that risk and face my fears and you never know what's going to happen if it's going to completely change your life. So I say go for it. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I always say if you don't do it, you'll never know because I think a yeah. lot of people are just scared to take that first step, but it's mm -hmm. like, if you don't take that first step it'll just be a no anyways. 
exactly you know, the mind is still yeah. just dry but did that course that you took give you any sort of comfort and guidance throughout the way without giving too much away in the course i love the way she has it set up she literally takes you from point a to point z and anybody watching it's the start your fashion business course she has her own brand this is a love song she's located out in bali she has her own storefront she has her own manufacturing company she's had celebrities like rihanna and the kardashians wear her lines she's had her clothing in urban outfitters or ball i mean this woman is legit yeah <laughs> she's such an inspiration for me personally and i could speak on her all day long in her course she starts the course all about your mindset it's so important again go back to just taking that that leap taking that first step but also having the right mindset. That is so important and so crucial when starting any kind of business. And then from there on, she takes you all the steps of the way. There's homework you have to do and <laughs> steps to take and research. You have to do the work. It's not like she does everything for you, but it's laid out for you perfectly. It is incredibly comprehensive. And I'm so grateful I found that because I would not be here where I am right now without that. Like you said in the beginning, people are always trying to sell courses nowadays. You don't know who to trust. <laughs> That you no, know, it's true. Yeah. But it consistently was popping up for you, and you're mm -hmm. like, let me just, let me just see. And it happened yeah. to, to work out perfectly, which is absolutely amazing. But yes. it is a lot of work, and I think sometimes people who don't go to fashion school they think the fashion industry is quite an easy industry to get into uh, yes. <laughs> and I honestly, I had that same misconception. I thought that you know I would just design something and have it back in a month and I would just be selling it. And there's so much involved. It is incredibly comprehensive. Right. So many people involved and, and so many steps involved and people just, they're, they're not aware. They're not educated on this. And right. yeah, we're just all naive and ignorant <laughs> to what actually <laughs> goes on behind the scenes. It's a lot of work. It's a different it type is. of work, I, I would yeah. say but it is still a lot of work. I'm not sure if you know, but I do have a background in fashion design. And so now I'm going to school for fashion marketing because when I went to school for fashion design, I actually saw you can be as creative as you want, but if you don't have a business mindset and if you don't understand how you know money works and how funding works and all of the backbones really to a business, because it is expensive. It's yes. not a cheap thing to, to invest in. And I knew that I needed to go to fashion business school to kind of back up my ideas because you can be as creative as you want, but. Stephanie has a whole community with other brand owners that you can speak with. And that was the number one thing that I saw were other brand and fashion designers that went to school, but they didn't know how to create their own brands. They were just taught how to work for somebody else. Right. And in the industry, but as far as business went, they don't teach you that. Right. So you end up having to go, like you say, you're now you're going into business and marketing, but that was an eye opener for me as well. Because yeah. I felt like, oh, I, I saved myself some money in the end because I, I skipped that. I just went straight to learning how to run the business. Isn't that so interesting how it's kind of set up to where you you kind of need to work for someone else, or at least that's what the kind of path is, is laid yes. for you. Do you have any tips for anyone who's making a leap? into the fashion industry from another background. If it's something that you think about all the time, trust your intuition, trust your gut, and just take that leap and take that leap of faith and just do it. It literally takes one choice and one decision to decide to go for it. And don't listen to the naysayers, <laughs> right. which a lot of times it can be your own family and friends. Also be smart about it. It is an expensive industry to get into. So making sure you have money put aside, budgeting and researching and learning as much as you can about the industry you're getting into, whether it's petite or another niche, you don't want to blindly go into something. You want to have some knowledge about it and understanding. But I just say, I'm a firm believer, just go after your dreams and do it. Definitely, that's amazing advice. I agree. I would love for everyone to one day look back on their past and say, I'm happy that I actually went for what I wanted to do because I always say you don't want to be 65 and wonder what your life could have been had you gone down a different route. I want to deal with regret for exactly. sure. Exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. And I think you kind of mentioned this before, but how did you navigate starting your own fashion brand? I know you took that course, but was there any other sort of, you know, things that, that you did? I can say I have a lot of support and I have an accountability partner from the course. 
which has helped me so much. She herself is a project manager with fashion brands in New York. And any questions I have, she's been able to help and guide me. And not everybody has that. So I've been very fortunate between the course, between her. I've just been really lucky. I believe it's just fate <laughs> at this point when things just fall into place like that. I, I don't have the normal route most people take with doing, you know, all this stuff on their own. So yeah, the course and having a great support system has done wonders. And you talked about mindset as well before. And I think yes. go back to that point, that's such an important aspect to think for everyone and no matter what industry really, I think if you have a positive mindset, it's easier said than done. But if right. you kind of, you know, calm all the fears and doubts in your head, I think it's much easier to go about things when you're feeling positive and feeling good about what Absolutely. you're doing. I think it really does change everything. So because especially in this industry, I mean, you're going to have mistakes and failures and things that you have to learn and bounce back from. And having that determination and willpower to persist anyways and have the courage to continue on, that's, you need that. Exactly. Definitely. <laughs> I think a lot of people in this industry are perfectionists. I know I'm quite a perfectionist and that can be feel. really tricky when you're in something like this because you do have to kind of put that aside and say, it's okay if something doesn't go exactly how I planned. But it right. could be a bit tricky because I think a lot of people also don't start because they're trying to line everything up to be perfect. Yes. And which is never yeah. going to be perfect. Nothing's ever yeah. perfect. Exactly. That is another, maybe another block to why people don't really start because they are thinking of okay how can I make this good before I actually fund myself to do this so yeah I think that's another thing but once you get past that it's a bit more easier I didn't state it earlier but I had a business before this and okay. I had a custom wedding stationery and calligraphy business for three years and it's funny because I felt like that business helped prepare me for this one. Because now I know the mistakes I made previously. And one of those was being a perfectionist. And I'm a Virgo, so any Virgo is <laughs> type A perfectionist. And um, I just remember how much time and money and resources that were just thrown away because I would just start all over again and, you know, not know my worth and just instead of just putting things out there and then working and learning from it, I just wouldn't put anything out or, you know, do something all over again. Like I would do these big mirrors for uh, weddings, you know, with the guest seating. And if I had one mistake, I would just start all over. It's like, oh my gosh, something so minor that other people wouldn't even see and realizing that's just laziness and procrastination on my own end. Like you have to get past, like nothing is perfect, forget it. Just do your best and put out your best. And then if it fails, you learn from it and you pivot and you start over. So I learned a lot of lessons <laughs> before that I'm not doing this time around. Lovely. I think that is quite a good thing to know as well. Something that you've done in the past, you kind of learned from like you exactly said and you'll right. apply into what you're doing now. I think that's a good thing of working for someone else sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like, kind of learn what they do wrong or let's say, you know, you want to learn the industry. I think it's good to really indulge in the industry that you want to be in. And I right. always mention this to people, if it's not exactly your dream job yet, if you can take as much in from someone else yes, apply that into your own thing one day, I think that's also a great thing to do just because you get to see the back end a bit more and yeah. you understand. I heard a quote the other day that said you should get paid to learn. Like you said, going into the industry that you want to be in or eventually make your own business out of. Have as many mentors or be in that job where you're getting paid, but soak up all that knowledge. Learn as much as you can to turn around and then create your own thing. So that's really important is, you know, everybody wants to like leave their job or leave their nine to five to do something for themselves. But it's like, hang on, continue learning as much as you can and build that character and build, you know, that work ethic. And you can translate those into whatever you decide to create later on. I agree. And just someone actually asked me a few days ago, how, you know, how do you meet people in the industry? How do you get your foot in the door? Because when I started off, I didn't know anyone. And I kind of, I just met people as I went. And I yeah. said, you just have to put yourself in situations where you will be in the same room as people who you're aspiring to be like. Yes. Put yourself, I mean, it's easier said than done again, but right. just keep pushing and pushing. 
and just be in the same room as, as these people and talk to people and connect with people. I don't really like the word networking so much. I like the word connection because I feel like yeah. that actually much better than you know just making a network of people i think connecting right. people and actually meeting people that you like and you get along with takes you it'll take everyone much in a much better direction because yeah. you'll help each other and learn from each other and work together and push yeah. each other so i would say yeah if you're trying to get into the industry that you're looking to go into try to put yourself in a situation where you can potentially be in the same room with someone who is Absolutely. in that industry yeah no making genuine connections right. and relationships is so key because yeah. you never know like who can help you and you know kind of advance yourself in your career and that's so important instead of just like you say networking it does sound a little stuffy but getting in the rooms with people that you aspire to be like absolutely i 100 percent agree with that <laughs> what is the most surprising thing that you have come across while starting your business thus far i would say two things so the cost yes. <laughs> like yeah. I said a lot of what I learned was in that course so it wasn't like I blindly just went in and was like oh my god this is expensive <laughs> I I had a budget and everything but I had no idea especially when you are trying to start a sustainable and or ethical brand yeah those costs add up even more I mean every fabric costs every trim and embellishment any special techniques you want to do every sample I mean there's so much involved and it all has price. It, it can add up quickly. However, it's not to say that you have to have millions of dollars to start. You can start with a low budget and depending on the manufacturer and, and their minimum order quantities. And, you know, there's a lot of factors involved, but cost was big. And then also the time it takes. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I thought I would be in and out in a month with, you know, with designs and stuff. And that is so not the case. It can easily take a year, two plus years, especially in regards to a specialized brand, like catering to petites or, or plus size, you know, there's a lot more that goes into it. It's a lot more challenging than just making mainstream sizing. And there's a lot more sampling involved and just, it's very labor intensive. Knowing that now, I, I wish I would have known more of that side because Stephanie, who does the course, she doesn't herself have a petite fashion brand, so she doesn't really speak on that. So those are things I've personally just learned as I've gone through it. Right. Have you saw any type of different reactions from manufacturers when you were like, yeah, I need petite sizing? What was the response from that? I had interviewed a couple of manufacturers before the ones that I'm using now. I wouldn't say it was negative per se, but more so I've noticed they don't specialize in petite. It's not very familiar to them. And I'm realizing that now with my own manufacturers where we are having to make a lot of tweaks and adjustments through all the different sizing and more sampling than they're used to. And they did mention that they're like, we don't have a lot of experience with petite brands. And that just goes to show you that the petite market as a whole hasn't been properly tapped into. And even the manufacturers kind of shy away from that. And not that they, you know, like I said, speak negatively, but you can tell they're kind of like <laughs> a little apprehensive when it comes to it, which boggles my mind because you have children's clothing and junior's clothing, which isn't that far off from what our sizing should be. But it, I think it's just that word, <laughs> petite, like, oh no. <laughs> it's really crazy in the industry. It's bizarre, uh, yeah. Seriously, and going to fashion school, you should know how to to do that it's not like it's some crazy thing exactly what we we learn and so i think it's still crazy that people don't understand petite sizing or when you say it just like you said they're like petite yeah. sizing? what what are you talking about I think it drives me it drives me mad i think we're kind of seeing this shift really and i also clocked that a majority of the petite brands they're actually individuals such as yourself who you know, you wanted to just start a fashion brand and this has been your dream. Like for example, Jenna, she's a lawyer, Mona was a lawyer, you were yeah. in the medical field. And as a consumer, you see this gap in the market and you're like, wait a second, yeah. what is, yeah. what are all these people that are working in the industry right now doing? Why are they not doing this? 
I know. Even in fashion school, we don't talk about anything. So even the professors, they're pushing this kind of narrative still, even though yeah. it's crazy that we should be far out of this this time. Right. It's just sort of now that people are like, okay, we're getting caught up with this. I think 2023 was a big shift. Oh, um, absolutely. When I was growing up, my mother would shop at Petite Sophisticate. It was a petite-centric retailer. Okay. And they went away back when the internet boomed and all these retailers were moving to the World Wide Web. There hasn't been a petite-centric retailer since. They closed down because they didn't move online when everybody else was. And to me, that's like 20 plus years later and nobody's tapped back into it. And we've just been struggling out here ever crazy. since. And, and yeah. I do believe that a lot of us are just fed up. We're yeah. sick of being ignored and left behind when it comes to the fashion industry that we are. We're leaving our careers to pave We're our own way and fill that gap in the industry. And, you know, I love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> I am loving seeing all these new petite models and these petite brands and and we're all collaborating together nobody's in competition i think we just all are joining hands on this and want to make waves in the industry and be like you know what you guys aren't going to do this we're going to do it ourselves right <laughs> so i firmly believe that these next couple years 2024 2025 like it's going to be the year of the petites i'm calling it now <laughs> yeah no I agree. I'm, I'm happy to be here I <laughs> i'm agree. So looking forward to it no, it is so powerful and it's such a beautiful thing to see individuals come together who you know you you have a petite line, a few other people have a petite line, but instead of seeing it as, you know, you're not in competition, like we're in this together and everyone else who I've interviewed, they just speak so highly of everyone. I think that's so beautiful, especially in an industry that is quite competition led, that just shows how strong we all are. Yes. It's blowing, I'm telling you, yes. the strongest. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think the fashion industry still holds these crazy standards? There's so many factors involved that influence like beauty standards. I mean, let's go back all the way to like the Renaissance period where they had full-bodied women who were deemed desirable and beautiful because it signified wealth. And then fast forward, I grew up in the 90s where like heroin chic was like all the rage and all you saw on the runways and magazines were super thin women that didn't even have curves or anything. And then now we're in a day and age where you know, you have to have inflated lips, inflated breasts, and you know, a big rear end. <laughs> and you know, trying to keep up with it is impossible. And I do feel again that there's a shift happening where people want more authentic, more genuine models and, you know, representation of people that look like them. We right. wanna see people with real bodies and all different shapes, sizes, heights, and skin texture. I mean, we're in an age of inclusivity where we're, we are seeing more plus size women or people with disabilities. However, petites are still ignored. I, again, believe these, you know, phases of beauty standards kind of flow with the times and they're constantly changing, albeit slow. But I do believe, like I said, a, petites are going to have their moment. We're going to have our moment here soon. I mean, you were the first petite to walk New York Fashion Week, which was absolutely incredible. That like made me so happy. <laughs> so, you know, we have to start somewhere. And yeah. I believe things are definitely going to be changing here soon. No, I definitely agree. When I first started modeling, I was 17 and now 23. So I've been in the industry for a bit of time. I remember when I first was in the industry, I had no idea that cheap models were so like, oh my gosh, when someone <laughs> saw them, I didn't think that was a thing. But I started mm -hmm. really realizing because I was like the only petite person in any form of anything that I saw. And I was like, wait a second, what is happening here? I think it's so amazing that now petites are being represented more but i do think that it's still such a big pushback even from petite people themselves which i think is absolutely mad i see all of these comments on some of my stuff particularly of people saying i'm short and i still don't think that you should be on the runway so it's kind of it's a bit of a weird complex i feel like to have because here we are trying to be inclusive of everyone because everyone should be included in everything but you still have people who you know you would think would be supportive of individuals finally getting into the industry and finally 
being able to represent a group of people who have never been represented in the fashion industry ever. Right. Because we don't take five six as being petite. So right. <laughs> we're talking about true petite models. Right. Um, crazy that people are still even like no you don't do it as well as you know a tall person to me i think a lot of that has to do with people don't like change they're so used to seeing something in magazines on media whatever i think the more we see it the more comfortable people will get with the idea i'm all for it of course <laughs> i support it 110 percent. i love to see it i just believe like you can't please everybody People are always gonna have something to say or you're not always gonna get support from everybody, but you just have to do it anyway. Right. And I'm surprised to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I was as well. I was like, wait a second. I think exactly that's true that, you know, people just kind of are conditioned to see what is beautiful and what is normal, especially on the runway. But yeah, it's still so crazy to me. I wanna talk about your brand a little bit. What has inspired you throughout your collections and designing and things like yeah. that? Is there anything that you wish to specifically bring to the industry or what do you wish to change? But so, a bit of a question. I'll talk about first what inspired this collection. I knew I was gonna be doing a spring summer collection. I was just inspired by my own European travels. You know, everybody has that hot girl summer. I just was thinking what key pieces could a woman just take with her and travel and go sightseeing or go find dining and see architecture and museums and look stylish and sophisticated and beautiful. That was also comfortable. Comfort's a big thing too. A lot of what I designed was inspired by that and I have a little kind of a nod to vintage Parisian style, also like Greek and Roman goddess statue. Yeah, that was my inspiration for that. But as a whole, I really wanted to stress on size inclusivity because there is that misconception that petite just means thin. And that's just not the case. I personally know more plus size and curvy petite women. And I myself fluctuate in weight a lot. I've lost 30 pounds just this year, but I was not this size last year. <laughs> And you know, that, that has a whole other set of challenges. So not only are you dealing with being short, but then you're dealing with what is available out there doesn't fit you at all. So as much as I want to have a size inclusive brand off the get-go, financially trying to fund that is really costly. So I, I do have to start small. I am offering extra small to extra large, but that is my goal is to have a fully size inclusive brand with styles that flatter women of all shapes and sizes. You know, I can't cater to every single person and my styles might not be everybody's style, but that is something that's super, super important to me. That is so powerful. I think that's such a strong point that you touched on. People kind of having these misconceptions of what the tea is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's lovely that you're filling the gap for everyone because yeah, it's not fun when you you just want to find something that you're yeah. looking for. I love that. I seriously really do love that. When are you going to be launching? I have a specific date in mind, but <laughs> I haven't released it yet. I am okay. saving that for my email subscribers will be the first okay. date, but it will be next spring summer. That's <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really exciting. What are your feelings of launch triumph? What can you anticipate from that? I definitely feel like it's coming up quick. I mean, we're already at the end of the year and it came by so fast. So I know come January, I'm just going to have a few short months before, you know, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> before things are really going to get serious. But um, I'm excited. I, I've been working so hard and, you know, I have to learn patience and it has been a year in the making it's going to be more than that i'm just ready to show the world what i, I have been coming up with <laughs> that's so lovely and i do feel like when you're so excited all you want to do is just look at what i've done look what i've been yes. working on and just trying to keep it in and save it for the big day which i feel yes. like oh that would be so tough because i i know exactly what yours <laughs> <laughs> but that is so exciting. And I did see that you also were working with fit models. How has that been going? What I've been actually doing, which is actually not the industry standard, is I'm using just your everyday real life girls. Locally, just put it out there. So anybody that was under 5'3", between these sizes, I've had a lot of women that have volunteered and have come here to my house. 
<laughs> give me so much feedback. Yeah, in the industry, you use a fit model, which is a professional model that is one size, you know, you can fit your garments to them and they don't change their weight at all. So it's consistent each time. But again, because I am trying to cater more towards curvy, petite women, I needed to focus on just real bodies and real feedback because at the end of the day, that's who I am making clothing for. I will have obviously real models <laughs> for the campaign itself, but these sampling phases, I'm definitely just using local girls who have been so amazing. They've given me such great feedback and I've been able to, you know, make little tweakments <laughs> here and there <laughs> with their suggestions and it's been incredibly helpful. Wow, that is so lovely. And I meant to ask before, could you draw before you went down this path? I didn't like go to school for drawing or, or painting or anything like that, but I've always been creative. I've always loved arts and crafts. My own mother, she's an artist. So I, I can thank her for that, yeah. for the creative side. And when I had my other business, I would draw venues and the couples themselves and just artwork for their wedding invitations and stuff. So I do have that experience with drawing and painting and uh, what have you, but I've never done clothing. <laughs> so I, I did design and draw out my own clothing designs, but if it's perfect, I don't know. <laughs> and then they looked amazing. That's why I yeah. asked because I did see that you posted something. I was like, that's really good. And I think for anyone who's confused on why I asked that question, it's because when you send things off to manufacturers, you need kind of really specific notes so that they understand what you're trying to translate to them. It's kind of like a language, you know, you kind of it are is. speaking to them through, you know, the same lines that you're doing, the types of pockets, the types of this, the types of that. They'll it's know what you mean. Those listening that aren't aware, a tech pack is basically the instruction manual for every garment. So each one has its individual instruction manual and you do, you have to design the clothing, all the stitches and the buttons and the front and back and sometimes even the different colorways that you want. So I did, I had to learn how to create these drawings and create the tech pack. And it's all been a learning experience, but I'm enjoying it. And I do love drawing up these designs. I have a ton of designs in queue. I had to really pick and choose what to start with. So that was really tricky. I love that part of it, like just the whole creative designing portion of yeah, yeah, that is the fun bit, isn't it? It is. <laughs> all the tech packs. Oh gosh, I don't <laughs> do not miss doing them. <laughs> so I do love the way that you've been going about your social media. It's kind of really interactive, and we get to know you as well, which I absolutely love. And I think also from a marketing perspective, it's so good to get to know the person behind the brand. It's just easier to connect with you, you know, like yeah. when you yeah. actually some things about yourself and we're like wow we can really connect and relate so right. I think it's lovely what you're doing about you know really showcasing yeah. yourself as well you're also quite interactive with your followers coming down to choosing the name I remember seeing that so how did you come up with Petite Culture? Yes it's a clothing brand yes I want to cater to petites but for me it's so much more than that and I chose that name intentionally Petite Culture because I really wanted to create almost a world <laughs> that didn't exist and something that I wish I had growing up, which was just a space where petite women are, they feel seen and heard and celebrated and they are the main character. And the best way that I can do that is with a petite centric brand. And I just want to celebrate petite women and have us all come together and be our most confident selves and feel beautiful and no longer be ignored in the industry. I mean, I do want to leave my mark like that. And I I connect with people personally because we all share these struggles. We've all been there. And it seems like nobody outside of our little bubble <laughs> understands. And I do, like, it's important for me to not only show back end and the process, because I personally love to see that. Like, I, I like to see, yeah, all the, all the good, the bad, you know, the happy, the negative, whatever. It's more for me about, again, building those real connections and, and engaging with your audience. And I love it. I feel like I just want to be friends with everybody. <laughs> and it's amazing just meeting people all over the world. And I love it. And I will die happy if I can just make that mark and have that stamp on the world and 
That is what I am doing this. <laughs> really are making your stamp on the world. And I'm always so happy to be supporting as well. <laughs> I think it's so important that we all, you know, stand together because I know you said small bubble. It's a massive bubble. If you think about it, though, it, it feels it small and because we right. don't think about it so much, quite silenced in this space. But it's a massive bubble. The majority of the world is actually petite. Exactly. mind boggling to me that we're still trying to we're here guys I mean, and honestly i just i feel and i've heard this where people don't believe that there's money to be made in a petite market and it's just mind-boggling because like you said i, th I believe it's 40 percent of the women in the world are considered petite please tell me there's no market for that okay <laughs> that is almost half the women in the world are considered petite so if anything this is just Again, the petite market has not been tapped into. I don't know why, but clearly me as well as others are, you know, fighting back to be like, no, there definitely is. You don't have to just cater to mainstream sizes and there is a market for petite. So again, I'm trying to make that known and be loud and proud about it because I do want to make change in the industry and say, hey, like we're here and you know we can do it too no i agree it gets five fours everyone's quite short so it's like where's this no market i think you're exactly gonna be when you're one of the first petite brands and everyone was saying there's no market and you're like look yeah. at it. <laughs> you know what it's a good thing because you get to be a part of this change as well because there's really no noise around it we've just really started and like i said in the start of my career it wasn't it was not a thing at all like i just do not see but now I, I'm starting to see way more you know, noise around it. And I absolutely love it because I was quite naive to the fact of, I didn't know that this was going on before I entered the industry. I was still quite young and I didn't think that we would have all these problems. Yeah. But the things that I went through from designers and casting directors, it's they make you feel like, like not even relevant, if that makes sense. Like yeah. just because of your height. I remember I stood in New York Fashion Week casting for about five hours. I was waiting in line. It's my turn to walk. The casting director wouldn't even look at me in the face. I waited five hours to get no sort of acknowledgement at all. The Gosh. least they could have done was at least look at my walk. And I also think being petite in the industry, we have to be that much better and that much on the ball because yeah because of our height. I don't mm -hmm. know if you feel the same type of way or if you if you think that that's, but from my perspective, I think that is quite a thing. Like we need to be really on it. I feel like if, if we're gonna make any change in the industry, we have to be, we have to be exceptional in our craft. We have to be loud and persistent and continue showing up to make those changes and be seen and heard and recognized because otherwise, you know, we'll just continue to be ignored. But I'm just happy to be, in a group alongside other amazing petite models and brands and and we're all truly in this together and i i'm here for it i love it <laughs> i love it as well i'm it makes me so happy and i think really these next years like you said are are our years coming up and you know we're going to change change the industry and be the front facing part of it so i'm happy for that and i'm so excited yeah. for you to see what's in store for petite culture I'm rooting for you. I'm happy to be here from the start. Like I got to see you. Yeah. Know, and I would say, don't stop doing that. Like no matter what point in your, you know, how far you get, cause I know you're going to do amazingly well. Thank Keep you. doing that because I, I think that's so amazing to show the real parts of the industry. Because I also think a lot of people, they just show the good and the happy, but not everything's all rainbows and butterflies you know Absolutely what I mean? not. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's so many challenges along the way but yeah but i think it's so amazing to to be able to see your journey and you'll always get to look back at and see where you were at this point do you know what i mean yes. it's, it's lovely yeah. to see, and you can always come back and watch this video and see kind of where you started which is exactly so <laughs> as well so with, speaking of the future where do you see yourself in the next five years do you have any future plans coming up? <laughs> I honestly, my focus right now is brand awareness. For one, I, I want to get my name out there, be recognized. I would love to make enough profit to reinvest in the business like I spoke on earlier, to create a fully size inclusive brand, obviously create more designs and styles and colorways, but I would love to grow enough to have my own warehouse and be that, you know, 
go to petite retailer for women out there and help petite women feel beautiful and confident in themselves. So that's really my goal. I love that. I love that. I really would, like I said, love to just grow the brand first, start small, slow, and then hopefully I would love to have my designs in major retailers and department stores. I want it to be accessible, not just online, but just, you know, you can go to any store and there I am. <laughs> Aww, I'm supporting you and we're all supporting you listening to this as well. Likewise, I, I love everything you're doing and and the hype revolution. I mean, it's definitely going to be a shift in the industry for sure. So I'm looking forward to all of what's to come in the future. Thank you so much. And lastly, what does, this is such an important question to me. I love this question. What does fashion mean to you? Fashion to me is so transformative and it it's a vessel that takes so many forms. It could be your personal style. It could be to showcase your cultural identity or you know challenge the industry standards there's no rules you just have fun with it it's definitely a form of self-expression so you can do whatever you want i just love it there's so much fun and creativity involved with fashion and yeah i i just love it <laughs> that is such an amazing answer i think that's i couldn't agree anymore so yeah <laughs> Where can everyone find you? Because that's the most important. Because I'm sure they're all going to be looking up your brand after this. I'm mostly on Instagram. That's where you'll find me. So that's at Shop Petite Culture. And I am under Petite Culture for YouTube and Shop Petite Culture on TikTok. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. And sign up to the newsletter so that you'll get a yes. list of when you'll be launching. Yes, that is on my website, the name petiteculture.com. And when you sign up, you do get a free style guide. So go ahead and grab yours. And yeah, stay tuned for launch dates. Sorry, backtracking a bit. What is this? Style? I think that's quite interesting for people to, to make note of. I was creating these videos with style tips and I just came up with the idea of consolidating everything that I've learned throughout the years into a guide and um, just having a free resource for people to use on the go or when they're shopping. And, you know, I even talk about certain fabric style tips that have helped me along the way and how measuring yourself is very important, knowing your inseam, things like that. So there's a lot of little tips and tricks in there. So I hope people appreciate it and see the value in it. But yeah, it was just a little freebie for my audience. Oh, that's lovely. I love that. Thank you so much again. Thank you.